in the heart of Rwanda's industrial hub in Kigali. Textile workers at Pinko Mango C and D Group Textile Factory are racing against the clock. This factory, one of the biggest in the country, is the result of a collaborative effort between Chinese and Rwandan entrepreneurs. With growing concerns about the adverse effects of second-hand clothes on local businesses, the Rwandan government started to welcome Asian textile investors in 2015. It gave them huge incentives, such as free space and tax exemption. In 2019, Pink Mango C&D Group Textile opened its first factory, and the farm has since expanded to four branches in Kigali's Special Economic Zone. That is the high season for us. You will see in our factories, people are working hard, very intensively, and uh, sometimes we are even using uh, overtime. C&D Garments employs nearly 5,000 runners with an additional 300 experts from various Asian countries argumenting their local workforce. This is one of the four factories owned by C&D Garments, a leading manufacturer of textile garments here in Rwanda. 1,200 people spend 12 hours here producing jackets that are exported to European and American markets. About 80% of these people are below 35 years of age, an emphasis to employing young people. We export to France, to uh, UK, the quantity, the orders. You know, Europe, actually, in terms of uh, consumption uh, of winter clothes, and I'm not so sure of statistic, but uh, approximately I can estimate Europe is consuming more than USA. In 2018, the US government suspended duty-free status for run and apparel products under the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, following a decision by the Kigali to raise tariffs on second-hand clothes to protect local industry. Rwanda's ban on second-hand clothes, locally known as Chagua, has since inspired the growth of local clothing brands. However, the challenge remains gaining acceptance from local buyers. The ban of the second-hand clothes has affected the entire market and obviously gave us some advantage to, uh, to develop our own brand. I would say that it's also more of a to change a mindset and it's actually the beginning of like um, allow the creative industry to, uh, to offer different uh, products and range. You, you're talking about prices, so the price range are different. Experts commend the ban on second-hand clothes as it supports Rwanda's local textile industry. Nevertheless, they acknowledge that locally made garments still come at a premium, compelling some buyers to resort to either shipping new and pricey garments from the West or illegally smuggling second-hand clothes from neighboring Congo and Uganda. Emphasize on the fact that we are, you are Africans and that you, uh, you wear something that uh, you own and that, you're, I, that fits to your identity. And more and more we have this uh, proud of being African and then to showcase the, the, our talent and our creativity. So the ban actually allowed that to say, you know what, the fancy or the uh, the cool trend of having something occident of coming from the, the occident is actually slowly fading and that now we are the next gener generation to actually ha have the opportunity to grow and then to uh, to value our craftsmanship our uh, our creativity our designs our designers statistics from the trade and industry ministry indicate that Rwanda exported 34.6 million US dollars worth of textile and garments products in 2020, up from 5.9 million US dollars in 2018. As the debate surrounding second-hand clothes continue to divide opinions, one thing is evident, the Rwandan government is steadfast in the commitment to nurturing the textile industry, believing that this stance will pave the way for fashion self-sufficiency, one stitch at a time. Ethan Tashobia for CGTN, Kigadi, Rwanda.